Our next speaker is Todd White, who's the Chief Operating Officer for Gold Corp, which is a large, important gold mine company. And Todd has had experience in mining all over the world, so he can talk maybe a little bit about best practices and what Gold Corp is doing. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I was going to start this by showing how important mining was by, I was going to ask a question that said, how many people have a smartphone? And I realized how ridiculous that would actually seem because I would be surprised if anybody doesn't have a smartphone out here. And then I was going to go ahead and tell you how many elements were in that smartphone, which is 62 of the 80 on the periodic table. And I was going to tell you that mining's important because it's the engine for innovation. But George kind of did a good job of that. So I guess what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to get right in, and I'm going to give you a three-point plan. It's the silver bullet for how to design the mine of the future. But first, I probably got to knock through these slides. You see there's, there's <laughs> tin and aluminum, and there's all these things, and they're really important. So as important as mining has been, and George, he talked about this also, but I want to illustrate this a bit. So this is the mining industry over a 50-year period. What you see is a picture of a truck in 1967, and you see a picture of a truck in 2017. I, I think they, in fact, I think we still have some of those 1967 <laughs> trucks running around on some of our mine sites. The point here is, Innovation and change within the mining industry has historically been at a snail's pace. Now, on the other hand, this is a phone in 1967. Actually, some of you out here, this is actually a phone. It worked at one point. <laughs> and this is a phone today. So in the span of 50 years, there's been radical change and radical development of a phone versus a truck. So. Designing the mine of the future. So we're an industry that's slow to change. We're slow to innovate. We're very important, and we like to be told that. <laughs> but now we're going to design, and, and very, it's very rare that we actually get to build a new mine. It takes a very long time to find these mines, to, to study them, to decide whether or not there's an economic case, and permit them. So it's a 10 to 15 year period in some examples. So you get over a span of a career, I've been doing this for almost 25 years now, and I've had an opportunity to two times in my career to actually build a new mine. That's, you know, mines get recycled quite a bit, but to build a new one is a, is a fantastic opportunity. So I want to talk to you about the Board and Gold project that we have up in, you know, 160 kilometers from Timmins. 2015, uh, Gold Corp acquired this project. Um, we liked it because of the standpoint that we saw this as you know, an opportunity to utilize the infrastructure that we have in Timmins. It's already been in place. In fact, most of it, some of it's been there for 100 years. And we said, this is, this is close enough to truck. And we said, great. So what we did, we did exactly what we always do when we get something new. I mean, miners are no different than anybody. We might have a whole portfolio of operating mines and our own projects, but as soon as we get something new, we're all excited. That's, you know, we're ready to go. We, we put together a team of engineers and geologists and project managers and, and metallurgists and, and even guys like me that don't know anything about that, but I was excited also. <laughs> and so we came in and, we, and we, we started doing it. You know, we had this blank sheet we had this, this blank canvas, and we could do something different. And the next thing you know, we're all excited and we're, we're planning this, and suddenly this blank canvas, to me, is starting to look like paint by numbers. Some of you might have remembered that from your youth. And, and I said, actually, we're doing exactly what we've done in the past. We're designing this brand new mine to be exactly what we've done in the past. We said, why do we do that? I, and, People looked at me and said, well, because that's, that's how we do that. And so I said, well, okay, maybe we should do something different. And so here's point one of the three-point plan to design a new mine. 
It's just to decide to do it. I can tell you that this might just, this is like the aha, uh, duh moment, right? But let me tell you a little bit about the mining industry. We're incredibly capital intensive. I mean, we spend billions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to build these mine sites. We expect them to last for 20 years, produce gold or, or tin or any of the other 61 elements that are in the iPhone. And so what we do is we do this with an inherent amount of variability and uncertainty. We drill holes in the ground, we pull a core of rock about that big out of the ground, we look at it, we assay it, we put it in a program with the thousands of others and we decide this is what the ore body looks like. It's underground, we've never even seen it and we're, de we're designing a mine. So what this drives us to is it drives us into a very conservative position because mines that we as a company expect to last for 20 years, certain stakeholders that tend to buy our shares and they expect that to get a return very rapidly and quick. So when we start talking about, well, we could do A or we could do B, and B sounds really cool and has a bunch of potential to change and disrupt the way we do things and lower our costs and reduce the carbon footprint and minimize water use, but we don't really know if it'll work, we're gonna default and go over here on A because the penalty for failure for us is huge. It's massive, it's, it's billions of dollars in shareholder value if we get it wrong. So just deciding to do it may sound simple and easy, but to convince a culture of mining engineers, project managers, and guys like me to, in some instances to do something different is a monumental task. But it's step one, you have to do this. So with Borden, we said we're gonna do it different. A little bit, we're gonna, we're gonna wade in the water just a little bit. Not where the sharks are, but kinda close. And we said we have an opportunity to focus on a, 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 an issue in the world today that I think is fundamental, to, that has to be solved, and that governments aren't gonna solve it, and, and institutions and academics aren't gonna solve it, we collectively are gonna solve it, and that's greenhouse gases, global warming. We said we can build a new mine that, uses, that, that generates 50% less greenhouse gas than a conventional mine of its same size, and we said, well, how are we gonna do that? We said, we'll use battery-operated vehicles. I, I said, well, you know, I was up there and they had, a, they had a small scoop, which is an underground loader that was battery operated, and I said, they work. Why don't we do that? And we said, great, we can do that. And we started doing our design and everything, and we found out that some of the equipment that we might use is available, but a lot of it wasn't available. So we had to say, look, how do we do this? So you have to challenge others to innovate. We knew we couldn't, you know, we don't design trucks. We drill holes in rock and break it. Other people design trucks. So what we said is we need some help. And so we challenged others to innovate. And also in that respect, we acted as a catalyst. I, I, I'm so proud of the fact that we can act as a catalyst for the industry at, at the same time of supporting one of our projects. So we got together with a company, Sandvik, which is a, a company that provides underground mining equipment to many of us and a company here in McLean Engineering, which is a you know, company that also has been developing battery-operated vehicles underground. Now, there's a lot of advantages to battery-operated vehicles. They're, they don't produce as much heat, they, they don't have emission, diesel emissions. Um, it's quiet, I mean, it's an eerie feeling to be in a, mines are normally loud and noisy, but a, a battery mine is very quiet, which is kind of cool, I like that a lot. But, but they tend to be smaller. The battery technology wasn't available for the size of equipment that we were looking for, so we challenged people and we said, we need this. We together need to develop this, and we formed some great partnerships and very pleased with those. So now we've decided to do it. We've got our partners. We're moving down the path. We're feeling great about it. And we've, we've got you know, a decision to build the, you know, Canada's first all-electric mine. We've got brand new equipment that's never been produced before, and it's working. We've put it in some of our other mines to test it. But we're missing a key, key element, and that's the design together. In today's mining industry, it's not good enough to be a really good miner, to be, a, you know, to, to be an economic miner, to be a, 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 you know, a good citizen in, in terms of our government uh, obligations. 
The third real leg of a modern mine, a mine of the future, is how do we be a member of society? You know, when I started this, we were so focused on shareholder value. That was, I mean, we didn't talk about anything else, to be completely honest. It was about shareholder value, shareholder value. What we've, you know, over 25 years, what I've realized is, is that shareholder value is created by achieving and meeting expectations of society today, which are very different now than they were then. So when I say design together, that means our partners, whether that is our employees. When I start to talk to employees to say, I've got this new thing that you've never used before, but it's really good here, try it. Most of the time they're saying, I don't think that's, that's that good. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of work to do with them. But primarily this is about our partnerships with our, the communities in which we operate, and the, as well as the, you know, the governments. Many of the, you know, all of our, every one of our operations, you know, is you know, within the territory of several of the First Nations. We have fantastic relationships with 22 of the First Nations. All of us together, but when I say design together, it's about bringing those together in the design phase to talk about what are we trying to accomplish here. In many instances, we need government regulatory bodies to enable regulations to allow us to do the things that we want to do. But we're very proud of the, our, our relationships and how we develop those. But again, you know, this is, I, I could have talked about the technical details of geology and all these, you know, the, the rock mechanics and all these other things. But that stuff we know. We know how to design mines. We know how to, you know, mill rock and, and recover gold. Our number one challenge is deciding to do it, enlisting partners, and designing together. That's the key. And all of this, in my mind, is the key to actually disrupting mining. You know, we can, with this design, um, you know, again, our electric Borden mine um, is, as I said earlier, 50% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, so, you know, 7,000 tons less than a comparable mine of its size, uh, 3 million liters of diesel fuel. All the, you can read this stuff. This is all fantastic, and it's the opportunity for us, and I think it's the next step. It's a little step, but it's the step forward. So I'll leave you with this. Einstein seems to be getting a lot of play also today. I, you know, I, it seems like George and I you know, maybe could have compared a few notes. At least we don't have the exact same quote. But, um, <laughs> and again, it, it's about changing the way we think, right? You know, you know, we, we can certainly, we can solve our problems, but we can't solve the problems if we continue to paint by numbers. We have to do things differently. And I would tell you that in any industry, we have to do things differently. And I think a lot of that is you know, I've, I've been recently putting a lot of thought to societal expectations of corporations. And I think that's an area where we really need to focus on and understand what are those expectations. Because if we, if we don't understand those and don't embrace that, we're going to be fighting against it. And that's counterproductive and it takes a ton of resources and a lot of time that I would rather use thinking about how to build and design the mine of the future. I thank you for your time today.